Oh, yeah. yeah. So the lesson for this year's Midnight Madness is if you find a dead body, just leave it the fuck alone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John Hewitt, director of Acolytes. Unfortunately, the, the kids aren't here. And actually, talking about that, the, the kids are actually kids are in school. The kid, you, you chose to pick kids who are the right age for the characters. They are kids. So, uh, this is Richard Stewart, one of the producers of the myself for a couple of minutes. I, th I think that it helped, um, somehow it, it sort of got into the heads of everybody and it seemed to sort of re resonate that way. I wanted to make a, a truthful sort of portrayal of a, of a teenage experience, which for me uh, uh, is, 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 is best in the films of Larry Clark. Um, but I also wanted to make something that was sort of cool and interesting generically, like a Dario Argento film. Um, so, uh, particularly Suspiria. So, uh, that answer, that's not really answering the question, though, is it? Um, <laughs> maybe that, maybe the, the way the way I sort of felt about that pan at the beginning of the film, and um, John and I talked a lot about this during the production of the film, basically, was to um, that was really uh, to kind of set a mood, and that whole area is extremely creepy, actually. In fact, uh, every time I used to head up to that particular part, it's an area just north of Brisbane. Um, it's near the north coast, and uh, that mountain range uh, is called the Glasshouse Mountains. And, it's pretty spectacular, and, but it doesn't take much sort of after spending a while there to actually kind of get a real mood of that forest. And, um, and I think that soundscape that we, we used there was kind of really kind of set the mood for the film basically. I think at one, one stage we were actually talking about, you can hear sort of quite subliminal screams and all sorts of strange kind of sounds sort of percolating through there. And um, yeah, I like that I think. Uh, yeah, um, I'm just trying to think. Um, the, oh, I was going to make a point. <laughs> <laughs> about the sound. Um, you've got to give a cool answer. <laughs> yeah, I'll come back to the sound thing. I'll, I'll get it in a minute. 
Um, oh yeah, no, that's right. Um, <laughs> the experience of um, like I really wanted. Well, we, we really wanted to push the sound as far as it could go. Um, and one of the things we just oh, well, uh, we sort of knew, but we discovered once again, it was one of those frustrating experiences when um, when you when you're delivering to a 35 mil print. Um, the sort of the, the Dolby digital strip or whatever, you, you have to sort of really fuck your, 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 your digital sound up to go onto a print. And like the bottom, like 20, 20 hertz at the bottom and anything above 100 hertz like is, is not there. Um, um, and all that sort of uh, messing around and rumbles and sort of, I wanted to work the subs like you wouldn't believe it. And when we actually came to do the print master, the, uh, it was artifacting and, you know, like we're in the group, it, it, doing the sound, the final mix and outputting it and the Dolby guy was there and he couldn't help and he just had to sort of fix it on the fly. But, so, I, I guess what I'm saying is that we pushed like Dolby beyond its limits. Um, um, and I, I was sort of a little shitted off because it seemed insane that we could create sounds in the sound mix that we couldn't actually put back on the film. Um, but, yeah, I guess, you know, that's a lesson learned. And it, it was interesting, um, when we did the, uh, the the digital intermediate and the print at, at uh, Park Road Post Weta in uh, New Zealand, Peter Jackson's facility, and um, you know, one of the things they do to sort of blow your mind is uh, they take you into their big fuck off sound mixing room and uh, put up uh, 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 King Kong, you know, and get the, the trailer. and. Uh, you know, which is a pretty incredible experience in that sound mixing room that they've got there. And uh, but I was talking to the guy, and he said, "Yeah, yeah, we've got a, like a, a a 20 20 hertz drop off and a 100 hertz sort of tail off. So you can't actually make sounds in that room that you can't put on a print. That was pretty cool. I knew Pretty Jason would be on top of that shit, right? <laughs> and I got to say, this uh, cinema is really good. I've never heard this film sound better. Yeah, thank you. Mm. Yeah, this is a cool cinema, man. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's a completely different experience, man. And, and the guy's last name for a while, Hollywood say it was the best sound they'd ever heard. So, here.